Thing. This is our first ever live podcast, which is super fun. The kind of the premise of, of this show is we love to ask questions. I feel like for so many of us, we have so many questions that we're asking God, that we're asking ourselves. And often those questions are things that kind of get in our barriers, but we want them to be bridges. And so I'm just excited today to talk a bit about just the chosen, about how it's impacted so many of our lives, the incredible impact it's had in, I'm guessing, everybody here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Chosen Con, how we doing? Are we feeling good? First day of Con, man, you guys are excited. I love this. Hey, we have a, an amazing, uh, about an hour right now with some incredible people that we're really, really, really excited to get to hang out with. I think you guys know them, I'm sure. I think you guys are fans of the show, The Chosen. Have you heard of it? I'm a big fan. But right now we have the amazing Nick Shakur and Amanda Jansen. Hey, can we talk about Nick's outfit? Oh man, you're looking good. How are you guys feeling today? Good day so far? Yeah, I mean look at this. This is why it's so good. All these people are amazing. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Hey, can we get can we get Nick's, Nick's mic on? You gotta hear his lovely voice. Is he want to give it a check? Another check? That's okay. You have a God-given loud voice. Wait. Oh. Hello. There it is. Come on. Hey, he's the God of miracles. Hey guys, thanks for joining today. Thanks so much. As you can see, we're on questions with Caden right now, which is a very fun thing. This is our first ever live podcast, which is super fun. The kind of the premise of, of this show is we love to ask questions. I feel like for so many of us, we have so many questions that we're asking God, that we're asking ourselves. And often those questions are things that kind of get in our barriers, but we want them to be bridges. And so I'm just excited today to talk a bit about just the chosen, about how it's impacted so many of our lives, the incredible impact it's had in, I'm guessing, everybody here. Yeah? What, are you guys having a good day? Busy day? It's been amazing. Yeah? What's your, what's your best part, favorite part of the, the whole conference so far? So far, I had an amazing roast beef sandwich with cheese. It was amazing. What are you putting there? Are you doing mayonnaise, mustard? They did it for us. Okay. Pickles. Mm. Cheese, yes. roast beef, absolutely, and a ciabatta type bread. Mm. It's very good. So we're talking foods. The best part. What about you, Amanda? Meet and greets are my favorite part. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna resurrect oh, this. <laughs> well, hey guys, if you don't know who these amazing individuals are, um, this is this is Nick Shakur. He plays Zebedee on The Chosen. Say, you look a lot younger in person. Can we talk about that? There's, there's no gray going on. What, what are they making? There's a little bit. There's like, there's, you know, not as much as you know the show does. But uh, but yeah, when they, I said before, when they initially cast me and my manager at the time sent me the script, I thought this is a mistake. I'm not, I'm not a 55 year old Israeli fisherman. That's not, that's not my thing. And are you sure this is right? And she just said, yeah, they want to see you in person. And so uh, the minute I read him, though, it was so well written that it was almost like an instant download where the character just took over. And uh, I get to set and I check with the hair and makeup team and I say, so what are the plans to age me? Because the two guys that are playing my sons look like I'm their brother. <laughs> and they said, we didn't get any notes to, to age you. Is that it? Well, it gets even better and worse because I, I go to the makeup team last minute behind Dallas's back and I tell them to age me. So they whiten the beard, they do the lines. I said, change me up. I'm not here to look pretty, just have at my face. And they did an amazing job and I walked onto set and Dallas goes, why are you late? You're like 45 minutes late. <laughs> and I went, they were, they were aging me. I told them to age me because dude, I don't look like I could be their dad. 
and he took a very good look at my face, almost questioning what they actually did. And then he responded with, I don't get it, what did they do? So we're talking a very confident feeling first day on set. Yeah, yeah, I didn't say a word, I turned my face around and walked away. Yeah, I'm gonna go study my lines. And then also yeah. with us, we have the amazing Amanda Jenkins, who is in charge of, yeah, big round of applause, in charge of all the creative stuff going on at The Chosen, correct? As well as married to Dallas Jenkins. So it's fair to say you are the backbone of The Chosen. I think that's probably fair. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> so what, tell me a little bit about what you do with The Chosen. I know that um, I was reading a bit about you. You do a lot of things with creative, Bible studies, devotionals. Tell me a bit about what, what you're doing. Yeah, so I was a writer prior to and a, um, and a Bible study teacher. And so those kind of just came together. Hi, Uncle Jeff. <laughs> Uncle Jeff. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jeff. Hey, Uncle Jeff. Those things kind of came together. Um, so between seasons, we had people that really just wanted more of the show. They, you know, they kept saying, when, are you, when is it coming out? When is, you know, and it takes time to shoot and edit and all the things. And so we really wanted to give more and what made sense to us, because our hearts are for the Bible. That's what we really, we want the end game of the show to be the Bible. And so it just, it all made sense that I would be doing Bible studies in between. And that became its own machine, and, and then they want stuff for kids, and now we want stuff for teens, and now we want stuff for women. So it was, it's just uh, taken on a life of its own. Yeah. yeah, that's so awesome. So how much does that play into the theology that we see in The Chosen in, in episodes? Well, it's all connected. Dallas and I were um, Bible majors in college. Our, um, our Bible consultant was our Bible professor, and now he and I co-write the Bible studies. And so there's, it's steeped in, in theology, and we make sure we're running it past our people, and that it's always correct yeah. um, on the show end. And then, of course, that's true in our studies as well. So That's so awesome. I want to take a little pivot back to Nick. I got a question. I heard, and you can tell me if I'm, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I heard yeah. though that you actually voiced some Care Bears at one point. Yeah, one of them was uh, grumpy. <laughs> and the thing is, although he's grumpy, he still is a little cute bear. Yeah. And then the other one was Tenderheart. He was the father of the bears. <laughs> but no, what's crazy is Grumpy's belly badge power is a lightning bolt, and I booked him right before booking Zebedee, who's Father Thunder. <laughs> so, Let's go. Yeah, isn't that weird? God? Is yeah, that yeah. you? I think so. So how is that role doing something like Care Bears different than playing Zebedee in the <laughs> It's kind of along the same lines, because Zebedee's a little bit of a Willy Wonka meets Jack Sparrow meets Kramer meets, you know, all those different... Um, uh, the major difference with VO is it's very freeing. Uh, you can't get away behaving the way you behave in a voiceover booth on camera because it just wouldn't work. It would be too big, too much, and there's multiple times where Dallas will come in and say, okay, you're doing... You're going way over the top with this. Let's just bring it down a little bit. Because this is turning into the Zebedee show and this is the chosen. It's not the We Zebedee. love the Zebedee show though. I'm a fan. <laughs> Thank you, man. But yeah, but voiceover is very free. That was my first love. Um, I never dreamt I'd be sitting here in front of people talking about an on-camera project I was doing because that's not where my head was at. I was always passionate about animation and that eventually bled into on-camera. On-camera, everything's more toned down. Animation is uninhibited Holy Spirit freedom that's what it is it's just you don't have to worry about what you look like and it's it's so fun yeah that's so awesome I love that I just think it's cool that in in an art form like this you can be something like a Care Bear but then you can also portray something that's so powerful like a story from Scripture yeah for sure it's so cool to see like that the vast is the beauty of the arts Amanda from like a behind-the-scenes perspective I'm really curious to know what do you think has been one of the most impactful things for you being a part of this show? From behind the scenes watching production, filming, creation, I'm sure you had a, pro like, a hand in that. Like what, what does that look like for you and how's that impacted you? Because I know The Chosen, I've watched all three seasons and probably cried through 90% of the entire, anybody else? Just me? 
I'm sitting on my couch in puddles of tears just because the chosen has touched my life to get to see who I call my Lord and Savior and who I see these people I look up to the disciples how they push the message of Jesus and I get to see it in a real form that I relate to has been so impactful for me and I know all the people here and every person that's at this conference and so many others my parents my sister her husband her kids are all watching this and so I just want to know it's impacted us but how has it impacted you and what's it been like to be a part of this journey yeah I mean it impacts us first like the same stuff that you guys are responding to is the stuff we respond to in our in our living room and and Dallas you know as he's praying over in in writing you know he's crying I mean it really is this cool process that we actually get to experience it too um, and then I would also say that it's um, seeing it across the finish line is its own extraordinary fruit where you just go how do we get to be doing this like how do we get to be here for this in this front row seat to this thing that God is doing so um, yeah I, I would say it's it's I just feel like I'm, I'm really in a lucky spot to get to watch it from from beginning to end and be impacted myself yeah. Do you have any like cool stories of like one thing that you think of that has been like one of the most impactful stories you think of in terms of how the chosen's touched someone's life? Gosh, I mean, there are so many. I would say that um, the thing we did not see coming was um, the the no demographic of it all. And what I mean is, you know, you 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 put a show out and you're kind of you're kind of writing to adults, right? Because it's there's there's accents and there's multiple storylines and they kind of, you know, you've seen the show, um, it can kind of weave in and out. And Have you seen the show? It's pretty, it's pretty complex, right? Like it's pretty um, complicated and there's history in it and there's theology in it and yet children love it and people that are much older and, and don't tend to watch those kinds of shows love it and special needs people love it. I I am gobsmacked by the um, just the way that God is speaking across all demographics and that we get to hear common stories from all those different places of just how Jesus meets people yeah. and changes people yeah. and teaches them who he is and through this show. So I think that to me, it's not one story, it's this it's this tapestry of stories that you just we just did not see that coming. Yeah. No, it's so cool. I know it's it's such a powerful show and it's impacted my life. It's cool how I have always, I'm a little bit more fun-loving, a little bit more relaxed, and I've always viewed Jesus in that way, and then to see someone portray Jesus in that way was, as, was so confirming for me, but then also like fun, to be like, oh, he, he was fully human, you know, and to see that, and then to see the other characters, and how they're interacting, and how they would have interacted with the creator of the universe on earth, it's been super fun. But Nick, I want to hear a little bit about how this has impacted your life. How has The Chosen kind of transformed your life? How has it impacted you? I'd love to know. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, I've said it before. It's been uh, the show itself has been the conduit to get me to Texas. Uh, I said no to the booking about three times. I actually oh, turned wow. it down over and over, and they kept reaching out. I'm like. I don't want to be a 50-year-old fisherman. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> and I don't turn down acting jobs usually. It's just, that was the scenario at the time. And I didn't want to risk Care Bears because I was recording that at the time. And, uh, <laughs> it's like, come on, Care I finally Bears. made it. Come on, I, I made it in the cartoon world. I want to risk that. But, um, but it definitely has been the conduit to, to place me in an environment where uh, I, I found myself started to, hanging out with uh, the behind the scenes folks, the construction crew, and locals that I made friends with that are still like family to me to this day. And so one thing would lead to another, I'd hang out with these people, and uh, at the time I was struggling with the faith. It was like, you know, I grew up Greek Orthodox and I always was sort of made to believe, and in the back of my mind I knew that Jesus was the Christ, but it was more like a well, maybe not. Maybe this is just, you know, like mumbo jumbo because I'm not seeing anything tangible. But getting me here brought me to the place of, uh, of such desperation uh, that uh, one day I was over at Dallas and, and Amanda's and, uh, and that was weeks leading up to the encounter where... <laughs> Just give him a round of applause. Can we just praise God with a round of applause too. Is that allowed? Come on. No, you don't need to. I'm just pretending. No. He's an actor, everybody. He's like, gotcha. It's all an act. It's gotcha. all an act. 
it's all publicity. No, and uh, and before I left the house for lunch, I said, you know, I'm really, I'm really struggling and frustrated. And, and Amanda said, well, why? And I said, I, I don't know how to approach God anymore. I don't, I, I, it's, there's a block. And she said, well, are you reading the Bible? And I said, no, I would read the verses of the day. And then I eventually just deleted the app. Because <laughs> I got bored. And, and she said, well, you, you got to read it. And God will speak to you through the Bible. And I said, well, how's he going to speak to me through the Bible when everybody else is reading the exact same thing? I want God to speak to me directly. I don't want to read what everybody else is reading. There was this desperation that started to ignite in me. And, and she said, well, if you read it out loud, there will be things in there that will speak to you. And then that, that advice kind of hit me because it was like, oh, like, a, like an acting script. I take an acting script and I read it. And sometimes when it is written in spirit, no matter what the project is, like Care Bears, um, <laughs> the, the soul of the writing speaks to you. And so I thought, okay, now I'm kind of excited about reading the Bible because I don't have to think anymore. I just read it and let's see what happens. And weeks leading up to being invited to uh, this church here called uh, Mercy Culture in Texas, they had a conference. Um, it's crazy. Uh, I would start to read it out loud. And it was like little explosions would go off and be like, oh, that's cool. It was like my mind didn't get it, but my soul got it. And so I thought... Okay, like I can drive with this 10 minutes a day. I'm not going to get bored. Like this is kind of cool. You know, and, and what really helped me was disassociating from any kind of denomination while I read it. Because I thought, let me just read it as a testimony that somebody just happened to write and forget about everything else. Because everything else was kind of clouding me and it was, it was becoming frustrating. And eventually, uh, I, I end up at this church conference where... Uh, Eight people lay their hands on me after I buried these idols that I never heard of that term, like bury your idols. And I was like, what's bury my idol? Um, and I was at such a desperate point where I literally gave, gave God everything, my family, my finances. I really wanted nothing to do with the world anymore. And I just wanted to be with him. And that was so strange because it's kind of scary when you get to that point of, are you going to be here? Because I don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> Like, this is it. Please come through. Like, I hope it's not just a brick wall, because it's really going to get depressing if it is. Yeah. And it ended with a gentleman named James Orth, who uh, anointed me with holy oil. And there was nine people praying over me in tongues. And my body caught on fire, and I felt like I was about to die. And I went through the sensation of passing away, coming back to life. And I go back to California, and my entire family, including my relatives, are like, you seem different. This is weird. I'm like, you don't understand. Jesus isn't what you think it is. What? And I did get a lot of pushback from Christians because of the, the cultural you know, upbringing that they were used to up until I had a chat with one of my cousins, Seta, who's in her late 70s now, and she had an encounter eight years ago. I was like, I'm going to tell her to you. And I just stood back waiting for the backlash. And she went, same thing happened to me too. <laughs> I was like, really? She's like, of course. I'm like, is that why when I used to live to LA, I always felt compelled to come to your little dinky alteration shop. And I didn't know why, but I just wanted to be there with you. And she goes, she has a saying, she goes, of course it's him. Who am I? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so... It's been amazing, and James Orth is actually here. I got him a, a ticket. He's here today, and uh, he's back there. Great dude. They call him, they call him Papa, Papa James at the church, and I lovingly, because of his beard and he had a blue shirt when I met him, I call him Papa Smart. I think he's got a blue shirt on right now, too. Yeah. So that hey, was, thanks, Papa. Yeah, that was, that was the whole journey with... It's kind of like the journey happened outside of The Chosen, but if it wasn't for booking The Chosen, yeah. God, I think, would have... I'm a stubborn guy, so he would have had to create more detours for me to eventually uh, get to. Yeah. That is such a powerful story, like, unbelievably powerful, because you assume, when you're watching a show like this, that everybody who's acting in the show or a part of the show 
has a relationship with Jesus, but to know that even the people behind the scenes are being impacted because God's on the move throughout the chosen as an organization as a whole is incredible. So just thank you for sharing that story, man. Yeah, of course. And then just the, the, of course. the conviction and the vulnerability that you speak with is just so powerful to see. It's insane. Where do you think that desperation came from? I, I think there's a beauty to it in that, uh, I mean, there were so many things going on. I come from um, a war-torn country in Beirut, Lebanon. We experienced uh, the clash between Muslim and Christian militias there. We go to underground bomb shelters. and So I'm very familiar with that world. And it, it seemed like my life had been a roller coaster between going through a breakup and deciding to pursue acting and then doing that whole, you know, circuit in Hollywood of auditions and meeting all kinds of people, work in retail, and you're just, uh, when, you're, when you're open-hearted towards everyone, you don't have a filter to protect your heart, you can easily become destroyed. And so I was at a point where it's like, I feel like everything's been taken away from me, God, so you can have whatever's left. And then I'm like, <laughs> And I mean like praying for people and seeing things happen and there's a lot that I can't get into right now, but it's been like 20 plus encounters with extreme scenarios. Oh, I thought I was gonna lose my mind and I'll preface it by saying I've never done drugs. I don't do drugs. Cause that's the first thing people ask me like, did you used to, you know, I'm like, no, I didn't. And it's not even my imagination. So it was, it was, it was that. It's like everything had to pretty much be taken away from me. And God's probably thinking like, oh, hey, he's so stubborn. <laughs> All right, go go through your thing a few more years. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> As you join the stubborn club, though. And I'll, yeah, say, yeah. I'll say that Nick is, the thing that I've loved watching about Nick's story is that Nick is such a feeler, if you can tell. That's how he lives life. He's, he's a hugger. He's a lover of people. And... Um, that's how God met him. Like, God met him in the feels of it all. He, God doesn't always do that. We don't all get zapped, you know? But this guy got zapped because this guy is a zapper. Like, that's how he interacts with the world. Yeah, so it was so fun for me to see, because we're praying our faces off for the people we're working with. We're, they're going through this content. They, there's beliefs all over the place. It's, we, we welcome everybody onto the set. But... We've been praying for Nick for a while, and so to watch his story unfold in such a personal way, God's such a personal God, and that he met him in this way, it was really special for us to get to watch too. That's amazing. Praise God for that. Praise God for how you stewarded that relationship and loved on him. I'm sure that was a big part of it too. You said you were at their house asking questions. Yeah, that was kind of like the, the the start to to it, that yeah, advice. Yeah, the tipping point almost. Um, it's, like, it's like it started it, and then, you know, the friends I made with a lot of the locals here, that really, uh, I was like, wow, there's people like you that exist? That's so weird. And why are you guys so into Jesus like this? Like, you, like I didn't get it, yeah. but I, until it happens to you, you just don't understand. Uh, the biggest takeaways I, I always tell people is, uh, Keep seeking him no matter what, and even post-encounter, I think people misunderstand you and they think, well, what, you're perfect? Now it's like, no, I'm not perfect. Yeah. He is, that's why he encountered me in the first place, oh. duh. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> like, like, you don't, and you'll still stumble after the encounter, you'll still go through trials and all of that, but he's always there in, it's like, what I feel every, or not feel, but sense every day is, the tangible presence of what he called the Holy Spirit and how that's so custom tailored yeah. for you specifically. And that's why everybody, I believe, when they know him and they encounter him, you, you're, not, you're not what people think of as like, oh, you're just another brainwashed like drone. It's like, no, it's, it's this, this spirit is custom tailored to be your companion. Yeah. And it's not your spirit, it's the Holy Spirit. You can sense him around you. Yeah. And it's like, wow, he knows me the way I am. And then somebody else's Holy Spirit knows them the way they know them. Yeah. And so, I don't know, it's, it's some mind-blowing supernatural yeah, it's, stuff. It's the cool level of intimacy of, yeah. of a real relationship. Yeah. Like uh, me and, and Matt, who, give a round of applause to Matt. He's on the team with me, especially Caden. Me and Matt's relationship. 
may look a little different than our relationship. Yeah. Or me and Amanda's relationship. Because true intimacy breeds different things. And he needs to be loved in different ways. And, it, and it, the Holy Spirit does the same thing. He meets us where we need to be met. And then walks with us in ways that we need to be walked with. Do you know what's a trip, though? Uh, when you meet other people that have experienced the Holy Spirit. And it's like you meet them for the first time. Like when I just met you, it's like, oh, I know this person. Although I've never met you before. Yeah, yeah. Like you get that kind of... It's so trippy. He a trip. He a trip. <laughs> he a trip. Yeah. Yeah, we locked yeah. eyes and then we had something special. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We'll get we'll go get one of those roast beefs after this. Okay. Like, really just like, get in there. Mayonnaise, please. Yes. 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 A little mayonnaise. Amanda, I really want to know. Um, I have a, let me write. I have a really good question, so let me look it up. <laughs> I, I really want to know, like. In the, in the Chosen, I think all of us, we've been impacted in, just like what you were saying, very intricate and unique ways. Like, each of us have been touched in different ways from this show. But I really want to know, what is the hope of the message that The Chosen is communicating? What are you hoping that it's, it's saying to people? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about the show is that it's, it's historical fiction. I mean, it is based in the Bible, but... A lot, the conversations that they have when they're walking from one place to another, we don't know what those were, right? We're, we're, we're guessing. What would they have said to each other? What would morning have been like? What was their night routines? We're, we're doing that as a show. Um, and then having these moments of, that happen in the Bible. And so our hope is that the show lands people in scripture. That's what we care about. We care about the show pointing to scripture and pointing people in back into their church communities. And, and when we hear from people, you know, I, I had walked away from my faith or I'd walked away from the church or I have, I have church wounds or things like that, but this show is, is pulling me back into community and it's pulling me back into the word. That's there. You can't, you can't give us a higher compliment than that. So that is the absolute end game for us is that people would meet and know the real Jesus. And, and I love Jonathan Rumi, but Jonathan Rumi is not Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, Wait, what? Yeah, newsflash at Chosen Con 2023. And so we want people to know the real Jesus. So that's the, that's the end game. I love that so much. What are you hoping? Yeah, round of applause. The real Jesus. I love that. What, um, and I felt like I did get to see the real Jesus, if that encourages you at all. What do you feel like when you're, when you're portraying Zebedee? The, the father of two of the most prolific disciples in scripture, James and John, what are you hoping that your character, the message of your character is portraying um, through the show? You know, it's interesting. I, I was having a conversation, uh, our housing coordinator, Jody's lovely lady, and she's obsessed with Shabbat. So she invited me to one at her house and I went, and it was an amazing experience. Uh, she relayed to me something that I wasn't even expecting because I'm when I whatever the role is when I do it I black out I don't know what's happening like season one uh, when I went the warming tent after that cold November uh, sprint through that water in the, the, uh, the miracle of the fish scene the miracle about, yeah. the miracle that my like nervous system didn't stop but uh, the miracle of the miracle purple after feet. the miracle yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, and I, I go into the tent after we do that scene where I send James and John off to, uh, to follow Jesus. And the guys come into the tent and start going, ha, 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 ha. And they're doing it to my fist. I'm like, I don't get it, guys. Like, I'm cold right now. What, you got to explain this to me. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's how you were laughing in that scene. And my response was like, I wasn't laughing. They're like, yeah, you were. You were chuckling. I was like, no, I wasn't. And then I played it back. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm chuckling. <laughs> So I, I blank out, and to be honest, I just go in and I, I try and have fun with every, everything and anything that I do. But something that Jody told me that really hit me hard was, uh, she talked about how there's, uh, that Zebedee is very crucial and important to the show because that, she said there's a father sore in the world right now. And I was like, news flash to me, I'm like, well, what is a father sore? I have no idea. And she said, well, she explained what a father sore was, how, you know, people are afraid to come to God because they don't know what a relationship is like with a good father. And that blew my mind. And I could not, I couldn't even fathom that because my grandfather was such a prime example of who Jesus Christ was. He was a Greek Orthodox priest in Beirut, Lebanon, and he lived it. He didn't just go to church. Like church wasn't, he didn't have like an on and off switch. He was 
a priest 24 hours a day. And I didn't know what that was like. Wow, like, that, and that made me very, um, it was a very profound thing that she told me. And I thought, wow, I'm showing up and just goofing off. And in between takes, just kind of like poking at Dallas every now and then. <laughs> and here it is, and look what it's doing. So it just shows you that I never planned to do anything with this role for it to have any impact whatsoever. And, and if that's not a testament to what God does through people, then, you know, I don't know what is, because I can't take credit for that. Nice. Yeah. You know, it's cool. I was, this morning, obviously, I was looking up the Sons of Thunder, doing some research and thinking, like, you know, why did they get this name, the Sons of Thunder? And there's a lot of speculation. It's not super clear in Scripture, but there's a lot of speculation that James and John, as brothers, were potentially fiery. Maybe they'd argue, but also there's one instance in Scripture where James and John uh, basically say, like, hey, Jesus, let's just call fire down on the Pharisees and, like, end this thing. And Jesus is like, hey, hold on, like, that's not what we're doing. And that's where they think maybe they get this name Sons of Thunder. But what's really cool is, is um, John is actually one of the disciples that ends up living the longest. He actually dies from old age. And by the time he is um, about to pass away, he's no longer called a Son of Thunder, but he's called the Apostle of Love. And I think what's really interesting about that is that throughout his walk with Jesus, he went from thunder and anger and stubbornness to a figure of love. And I think that's so similar to your story and really what you were just saying is like, I was so stubborn. And then God walked with me and walked with me and walked with me into this area of love. And now I'm able to operate. But I, I can still get fiery. Yeah, but. come on. Hey. <laughs> Gotta be a little spicy, you know? I started off as grumpy and I became tender hearted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it all comes back to the Care Bears. Back to the Care Bears. <laughs> Back That's what this is really about today. Yeah. Hey, actually, this podcast is sponsored by Care Bears, so <laughs> there's merch in the Care Bear merch over here. Uh, it's to the right. Yeah, just go right. It's actually use code Zebedee 10% off and you're getting a discount. <laughs> but I think it's so cool to see your story. I obviously didn't know that about you. I just met you five minutes ago, but or 35 minutes ago. And it's real cool to hear your story and then see that God's placed you in a role where now you're recalibrating how people see the Father's love. Yeah, for and sure. I, I think it's so special. And I think, honestly, James and John are the way they are. I think it's because their parents drive them absolutely <laughs> insane. Like any good Middle Eastern or Jewish parents <laughs> keep their kids. We love a strict parent. We got any strict parents out here? Shout out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a good mom. You know, they're not your friend. I tell them that all the time. Yeah, my yeah, parents just say your that friend. all the time. Yeah, they go, when I was a kid, I remember one time, this is so off topic, I'm gonna tell this story anyway. I remember one time, we, uh, I was probably like 10 or 11, and my dad told me to do something, and I said, yo, chill, bro. And my dad goes, I am not your bro. I'm happy to say we're bros now, because I'm a grown man, but... We're not your friend. We're, you're a good mother. Chill is the way to ensure I don't. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you absolutely. tell me to chill, I promise I, I won't. I've never, That's a good note. Yeah, I've never met anybody that goes chill and you go, you're right. I need to take a deep breath. I'm being ridiculous. It's like, you chill. <laughs> I got to ask, so how many, kids, how many kids do you have? We have four. What are the ages? 22, 20, 18, 16. Oh, let's go. Oh, that's so cool. So we're becoming friends. Yeah. Are any of them getting into this acting space, creative space? Sam, our oldest, works on the show, oh, and he no wants way. to be a filmmaker. So he graduated a film with a film degree, and he's now working his way up from, from the, the low places. Yeah. And uh, I believe walks these guys around from place to place on set he's sometimes. And yeah, he's he's. He a, doesn't, but they have to find me on set, because I always get lost. <laughs> yeah. He's got his work cut out for him, but yeah, family where, business. Where do you guys film? Uh, Midlothian. Texas. Oh, Texas really? Here. It's here in Texas? And Utah. Wow. Jam. I thought we were going back east. No. No, no we're not. We, no, we're doing we it here. We live here. We, we need to make the, the, the plains of Texas look yeah. like the Middle East. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. I, I had no idea. Did you guys know that? Yeah. <laughs> My bad. That's on me. Someone should have told me that. Come on, bro. Hey, Anna, you should have told me that. I didn't know. We're filming yeah, in there's, Texas. There's a whole biblical town here, man. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. There's a, like, you guys have built out a whole set, a whole... I'm a big fan, too. Like, I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. I'm getting booed. Come on, come on. No, 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 no. no. I'm 
for the, I'm here for the Care Bears, guys. I'm here for the Care Bears. Well, hey, guys, I, I feel like um, my last question, and we'll wrap this thing up, my last question really is, actually two questions. I want to know, who is your favorite character in The Chosen? You're not allowed to say Zebedee. And, um, I know. And then you also can't pick James or John because you can't have a favorite kid. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to know who's your favorite character, and then what are you most excited about for season four? Okay, I'll go first. That is hard. They're hard questions. Um, I, also, I, I feel like you can't say Jesus. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like it would be Peter, um, because I love seeing the mess that he is. I just love seeing the bad choices. I love seeing the wrong instincts. I feel I identify with Peter um, mostly. So I would say that. Um, what was your second question? What are you excited for for season four? Oh, I always get scared of these questions. Um, yeah. You can't say things. I know. Right? That's why I made you do it. Um, I wonder if we can get anything out of yeah. them. Um, season four is... Um, going to be both uh, brutal um, and beautiful, like, and, and intermingled all throughout. So I, it's the emotional, um, you're really seeing the disciples come to a place of, um, of a more understanding and um, more struggle. So it's just, it's a, ch it's a churning season, wouldn't you say? I, I would agree with yeah. that. Yeah, that was pretty good for not giving. Yeah, I really feel like I came close. Like yeah. I just, I gotta get out. I gotta get Brutal out. Brutal and quiet. beautiful is like such a good yeah. picture. So let me recite one of the scenes from season four. Yeah, yeah, yeah please do. Start from the top, then we'll get down. I'll be John. Yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> somebody said Care Bears. Yeah, I heard Care Bears again. Uh, I've just rebranded. They're you today. eventually gonna be integrated into the chosen. <laughs> yeah, somehow. yeah, yeah. Be an Easter egg in season I mean, it's four. It's the same thing. They go around shining their light of consciousness on evil. Yeah, come on. The Care Bears, they know the Holy Spirit. But, uh, <laughs> um, I will say a, a character, my favorite to play has been Zebby, but I will say there's a, the character of, uh, not that I necessarily relate to the character, but I have such a respect for the way it's played. Ann Byers, she plays Shula, the blind woman. Yeah. The minute I watched her brief performance in season one, I thought, oh my gosh, it, it, she's not even acting. It's, and then when you meet her in person, she's this bubbly, fun German lady. And it's like, and I sat down and talked with her about, you know, wow, like how did you get into that? It's not, it's not necessarily easy to play someone with a, with a disability or a handicap without going, you know, making it cheesy or making it not, but she, uh, I respect the way she approaches her role. Like, she gets really method with it. She lives it on set. Um, she's very delicate and intricate with how she approaches character work. And I, I, I love that. I loved seeing that element. So I guess for me, um, I think her and Jairus are like two characters that I think are, are fun. They're both very fun characters that I enjoy watching. And the only thing I could say is season four, which is pretty much similar to season three, is olives, olive oil. <laughs> olive the voice is so good. Olive oil. We got olives. the voice out of them. Let's go. Well, hey, guys. It's such an honor to have you on today. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking. Can we give them a round of applause? has been our time. My name is Caden Fabrizio. I have the pleasure of hosting the Questions with Caden podcast, as well as leading a unity and evangelism movement called Yona. And if you guys want to tag along on any of those, you can follow me on social media. Um, but absolute honor to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great rest of your time. Take care.